and welcome to week six. This is Ludmilla Adams from fashionchalkboard.com. You are watching one tip of the series 52 weeks of fashion sketching in Adobe Illustrator. This week, we are going to learn how to create this fun fringe right here that has a little bit of movement in it. If you know how to do a basic brush, you might have noticed that when you put fringe on an angle, it's gonna stick kind of at an angle and not go down. So how can we do this? So we're gonna start with something very simple today. All right, so before we start, remember that you can download to follow along a little bit more easily or to just take things apart, this freebie right here. And the link for this download is in the description below the video. So it's in the free member area on fashionchalkboard.com. All right, to begin, I'm just going to go to a previous version of this sketch. And here I'm going to click on what I've created, ungroup this and just going to keep one of these as an example for width and delete some of these other parts just so I can recreate this. I'm going to take my rectangle tool and here I just simply click and drag until I have the length of the fringe and the width of the fringe that I'd like. And because we're at an angle, I'm going to put this right up here next to the angle of the dress could be a jacket, it could be a yoke or something like that. And what I do is I take my direct selection tool and I click on one of these anchor points and with my arrow keys on my key keyboard, I just move it up and I'll do the opposite here. I'll click with my direct selection tool on this anchor point and I move it down by clicking on my keyboard with the arrows pointing down. Once I have one, so I'm going to just delete the one that I've had before. I'm going to move this up right here. I'm going to option drag or alt drag and put the last one where I think the position should be. And then what we're going to do is create a blend between these two. So we can go to our blend tool and just click on these and go from here to there. So it looks like nothing happens when you first click, but just trust that you added this to the computer's memory. And then when you click the second time, you'll see a plus symbol and you'll create a blend between those two. The options that are in here for this blend are pretty cool. So we're going to create a gap in between these by double clicking on the blend tool. And I'm going to specify that I want a specific distance. I'm going to preview this. And my option was 0 0.1. And we're going to press preview once we change the option. And then we're going to say OK. Notice how this blend now is um, still just between these two. So the individual ones in between are not accessible to us. So what it does is pretty much it allows us to keep working on this blend. That's what we wanted to do. If we clicked here and we double clicked, we could still go and change this up. So it's still kind of live. But what I want to do is once I decide that this is what I wanted, I can break this apart by going to object expand to break it apart. Just expand the objects. And this allows me to then, with my direct selection tool, click on every second one, if that's what I wanted, to change the color for that. All right, so after that, all I did is pretty much just click on this transform, reflect, copy. I'm going to make this a little bit faster for the purpose of the video, maybe just option drag. Whoops, and there's gonna be some that don't really belong anywhere. So we could just click on them with shift and press delete. And I'm using my direct selection tool because it is grouped. And then once again, transform, reflect, copy. And I get to my transform menu by right clicking. And on the, on the Mac, you would actually control click to get to right click. All right, so then it's our flat fringe, which is pretty enough. Um, but we can use these options under the width tool called pucker and bloat to create some movement. So all we need to do is click on the pucker tool and then just softly click wherever you want to pucker. And then the opposite is the bloat tool. So maybe a little bit above you want to bloat this. So you could, with option, drag on a diagonal, drag up or down, and also add shift to keep the proportions. And then you can 
affect a smaller area with this tool. And if you want to control a little bit more of the bloat or the pucker, you can just double click on the tool in the tool palette and then you have intensity that you can change and so forth. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching. Um, leave me comments, like the video, subscribe. Let me know what's going on. Use the hashtag flatsketch52 so that I can see what you created with this. Maybe you created a fun little purse. Who knows, maybe you needed this right now on a shoe that has a little um, diagonal line on the ankle and you needed this to show your customer how the shoe is going to look or for production. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.